Welcome back to Joe's Valley, Utah. I'm Hank, and this is Buddy, a 14-pound Yorkshire Terrier with a thirst for adventure. And we're back to continue my foraging expedition. My first day of foraging led me to the eastern canyon of Joe's Valley, where I found a stream and was able to scrounge for some food. But it wasn't enough. The average person needs at least 1,200 calories per day to prevent starvation, and I only consumed a total of 30 calories for the day. So picking up from where I left off last time, I went up the eastern canyon. I'm not really recognizing very many edible plants, and none of the pine cones here seem to have any seeds left to eat. There is a lot of wild rose in the area, and the fruit is known to be edible and high in vitamin C, but it's more of a supplement than a food. I start to wonder, are the leaves edible? I haven't read anything about them being poisonous, and it would help me out to have another food source so I decided to do a test. The Universal Edibility Test for Plants. First, choose only one part of the plant and rub some on your skin. If you feel burning, itching, or your skin becomes irritated, then stop. After waiting for at least an hour, press some of the plant part to your lips and check for numbness, stinging, or itching. Stop the test if any reactions occur. Next, place a pinch of the plant part into your mouth and hold for 15 minutes. Spit it out if there are any negative effects. Step 4. Chew but do not swallow. If no irritation occurs in the next 15 minutes, then go ahead and swallow a small portion of the plant part. Do not eat any other food for the next eight hours. Check for nausea, cramping, headache, diarrhea, or any other ill effects. If ill effects occur, induce vomiting and drink plenty of water. Just because a plant isn't poisonous does not mean it's edible. The raw leaves I tested made me sick. Sometimes cooking plants can neutralize toxins, and I may have gotten a better result if I had cooked it. After a short rest, I head up the canyon for about five miles until I reach 8,500 feet. By this time, I realize things aren't looking good here. So I decide to hike over Middle Mountain to see if the Western Canyon has anything better to offer. The way up seems like a short hike, and before I know it, I arrive at 9,000 feet. The vegetation is a lot different up here. For one thing, there are elderberry bushes scattered over the hillside. Some are in different stages of development. And boy are they tasty. Even Buddy likes them. I consumed about 50 calories worth of elderberries while heading across the middle mountain, and I'm going to need all the energy I can get. Now it's a 1,000 foot drop in elevation through dense brush to get down to the western canyon, and I'm running low on water. I stopped to rest about halfway downhill, and I suddenly noticed a black bear standing up 15 feet in front of my face. It ran away so quickly that I wasn't able to get a shot of it on camera. Whoa! Holy shit! Buddy! Buddy, come back here! Buddy! Buddy, come back here! Buddy! Buddy! Buddy, come on! Come on, buddy! A little bit shaken up by the bear, I rush to the bottom of the canyon. As it turns out, this canyon has an even bigger stream than the eastern canyon does.
it looks like the bear is no stranger to this area. So I fill my water bottle and head downstream in search of some grub. This one will do nicely. I'll hold on to that for later. Squirrels and other warm-blooded animals can be very tasty, but they are fast and hard to catch. Reptiles, on the other hand, make for an easy meal, and this little snake looks like dinner to me. I'm able to catch it, kill it, skin it, and clean it in less than three minutes. By now I am thirsty and hungry, so I build a fire and hang my plastic bottle from a rope above the heat. Boiling water this way takes a lot of patience and time. After about 30 minutes the water has started to boil, and I call it good, because it's time to eat. recipe for wilderness stew. Start with some dandelion, add a little snake meat, one fresh beetle larva, and boil until well cooked. Let's try a little snake. Cooked up nice and tender. Not really very much flavor. The good thing about small snakes is you can just chew up the little bones. The bigger snake, you have to take the meat off the ribs the whole time. That's nice. How about some grub. It's pretty plump. Mmm. Oh. It's got a lot of flavor in the grub. It's a little bacony. Mmm. I brought some dog food for Buddy. And after I feed him, I'm on my way downstream again. A bountiful patch of elderberries provide a tasty after-dinner treat, bringing my total calorie count for the day to almost 300. I ended up losing five pounds in the two days that I was foraging. And though my trip was not a complete success this year, I did learn a little more about the place we all call home. Until next time, planet Earth. <laughs>